I want you to turn for a few minutes tonight to a verse of Scripture, John 8, 36, on page 11, 27. The Bible says in John 8, 36, page 11, 27, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Y'all have sung about that tonight. And I appreciate it. I don't know if I'll hold out during this message or not uh, because of the uh, throat that I'm having problems with, but I'm going to give it a try. And if I, can't, if I can't do it right, I'll quit and let you go home. We've already been blessed, have we not? Amen. Praise His holy name. We've already been blessed. I give God the glory for what He's done. If uh, the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now the word indeed is a good word, which means surely, truly, certainly. Now the freedom Christ gives is true freedom. Many people claim to be free, but they're still in bondage to something. Those Jews of his day claimed to be free because they were descendants of Abraham, and they were still in bondage to false ideas and false beliefs. Uh, some of them, they were in bondage to the Romans, they were in bondage to the letter of the law, and they were in bondage to the pride, uh, to pride and unbelief. And then they couldn't see the freedom in Christ Jesus. And there are many people in our world tonight just like that. They're in bondage to something. They have their religion, but they're in bondage because they cannot see the freedom we have in Christ. We have to really show people this. This is why we keep preaching all the time and never give up because the message needs to go out. Christ makes us free from the power of our enemies, from the broken law, and from the pride of life. Christ's freedom is a glorious freedom, to say the least. Now, what this freedom that we're talking about, what it is not, it is not freedom from bodily suffering. Some people say that whenever you get saved, you never have any more troubles. You never get sick. All you have to do is <coughs> just pray, and your sickness will be over. Uh, I was talking to a dear, sweet lady in another town near here this week, and she has a little grandson that has problems. He has to have operations uh, very often and have steel pins and rods and things put in his little body. But she said whenever we were on television, he would love to stand when Sammy was directing our choir. He would stand in front of the TV and try to direct that choir and say, look, Nanny, I'm trying to be like Sammy. I'm trying to be like Sammy. I talked to her just this week. He's still having his problems. But, you know, as sweet as that lady is, I didn't reprimand her. I didn't fuss at her. But she said that they have sent a multitude of prayer claws, and they made a quilt for him. Now, look, she is deceived. As sweet as she is, and she believes in Jesus, I believe she's saved and all that. But prayer claws, I don't care if they're quilts or blankets, I don't care if they cover the whole acre. They can't do him one bit of good. Brother, listen, when we get free in Christ, that doesn't mean we're free from bodily suffering. We sometimes suffer. I read in the Bible about a group of people that had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sown asunder were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. They wandered in deserts and in the mountains and in the dens and caves of the earth. Are we talking about hobos? We're talking about heroes. That's Hebrews 11. Brother, we're talking about the heroes of faith and how those great, these are the greatest these are some of the greatest that ever graced this earth, that lived for Jesus Christ, that believed in God with all their heart, and yet they suffered bodily afflictions. Now these scriptures are talking about heroes and not hobos. And among these were Gideon, Barak, Samson, or Sam, yes, Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, and many others. We're talking about good godly people now. Some of the greatest people in the world that I know of are suffering in their body tonight. I see it every day. I see it everywhere I go. Godly people that are suffering in their body. So we're not free from bodily suffering. Over in 2 Corinthians 1, 5, the Bible says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us. So freedom does not mean 
freedom from bodily suffering. And then this is not freedom from divine chastisement. In Hebrews 12, 6, the Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth every uh, son, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if we are without chastisement, we're not children of God. God does not chastise the devil's children. He only chastises his own, but he will chastise his own children. And sometimes we're being chastened, uh, and we just wonder why. But I think if you're being chastened, and rather, rather than pride, you'll know. You'll know you are, because you'll know something was in your life that ought to be taken out, or you were not doing something you should have done, you've neglected. God's wanting to stir you up and get you back where you ought to be. So God only punishes his own. He does this with tender, loving care. He's not boisterous and mean and hateful to you, but he loves you. Hebrews 12, 9, the Bible says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and uh, we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection under the Father of spirits? When your daddy spanked you, when you were disobedient, you gave him reverence. You gave him respect. You didn't bow up at your daddy. That is, if the right kind of daddy was giving you a spanking, you didn't bow up at him. You didn't fight back. You submitted yourself to your father. You gave reverence to that father. That was correcting you for your own good. Now, brother, if we did that to our dads, we ought to be able to do that to our Heavenly Father. If our Heavenly Father is spanking us, don't fight back. Praise God, yield to Him. Admit to Him, I've sinned, I've done wrong. Hebrews 12, 11 says, Now no chastening, for the moment seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth a peaceable uh, fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Not freedom from bodily suffering. This freedom is not that. This freedom is not freedom from divine chastisement. This freedom is not freedom from the attacks of the devil. The devil's going to attack you and me all along. Matthew 4, we read the story of Jesus and how that he was in the mountain and he was hungry. He was tempted by the devil. If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, he is the Son of God. No ifs about it. But the devil said, if thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread and eat. Jesus said, God said, my Father's word says, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He went on three more times to tempt Jesus, but Jesus overcame him on every account. Brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, holy and powerful he's, as he is, was tempted by the devil to try to do him wrong, to try to thwart him, his plan, and to bring him away from the cross and let you and me die and go to hell. But Jesus kept on going to that cross. So you and I'd be here tonight praising the Lord. So we could sing, he buried my past. So we could say, praise God, he set me free. He set me free. Thank God he set me free. We can sing that tonight because Jesus overpowered the devil on the Mount of Temptation. So then Satan tempts us in many ways. And Satan roars like a roaring lion, scaring us half to death. Satan seeks for those that are weak. Anybody he can devour, the Bible says. He slanders us to God, the Father. And he slanders you and me to God. Slanders us to God and slanders God to us. He can destroy everything we have but our salvation. And he cannot get our salvation. He can destroy our peace. That is, he can cause it to be disturbed. He can't destroy it altogether. But he can disturb our peace. He can rob us of a lot of our joy. He can take a lot of our happiness away. But praise God, he cannot undo what God the Holy Ghost did in our heart when we got saved. He tries to make us think that we've lost that. Hey, if you lose everything you got, you can't lose your salvation. But the devil will try to make some of you think you've already lost that. I'm here to tell you on the authority of the Word of God, quit worrying about it. You trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're in. You're in. How am I doing? How, how am I doing, Father? Hey, if I'm not doing it right, take me out of here. 
But I'm telling you, brother, God wants you to know that if you're in his family, you'll be there for eternity, forever. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. So he tries everything. <coughs> the devil tries everything <coughs> to make us think about anything. But some Christians wonder just why they're going through their rough and tough trials. I even wonder that. I wonder that sometimes. I wonder how this could happen. Why this is happening. Why in the world did this ever happen to me? And somebody that has really tried to live for God, why? You question that. You have those questions come through your mind. You don't blame God and get in his face. No, you don't do that. You're not a fool, and I'm not a fool. I'm never going to blame God. I'm never going to blame God for anything. But I just wonder sometime about some things. James 1, 2, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy. Whew, joy. When you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And we all need that. So, this freedom that Jesus gives is not freedom from bodily suffering or divine chastisement or satanic attacks. It is not freedom from the presence of sin. Sin is still here. 1 John 1, 8, the Bible says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You say you don't have any sin, you're a liar. You're deceiving yourself and you don't even realize it. So then, and the truth is not in you. That's what the book says now. So you interpret it any way you want to. I'm just reading it out of the book. Right out of the book. King James 1611. Word of God. That's what it says. Then, in 1 John 1.10, it says, if we say that we have not sinned, this is to Christians now, not to lost people. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. In 1 John 2.1, my little children, these things, he's talking to his little children, not the devil's children, he's talking to his own. He said, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. God doesn't want us to sin. We don't really want to sin, do we? But he said, and if any man sin, we have an advocate. That's a lawyer. That's a lawyer. That's Jesus. He's pleading our case. Hey, he, he says, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. In other words, Jesus defends us, and even though we sin, he's the covering for our sin. Hey, God buried our sin for sure. He can't remember our sin. He doesn't remember our sin. Somebody said God doesn't forget, but he just chooses not to remember. That's pretty good stuff, I reckon. Put that in there and kind of throw it around a little bit. So what freedom is not, it is not bodily, free from bodily suffering or divine chastisement or satanic attacks or sin's presence. But then what is it? What is this freedom? that we're talking about. Well, it is to be made free from the curse of the law. In Galatians 3.10, the law was holy, just, and good. My friend, it's God's character. It's God's own holy law that God gave. It's perfect. It has no flaw in it, the law. But that law is something that demands perfection out of us, and none of us can do that. None of us can perform that. We sin. And uh, if we offend in one point of the law, we're guilty of all, the Bible says. So there's not anybody in the world can be saved by trying to keep the law. You're just gone. You're lost. Well, what's the hope? What do we look for? We're free in Jesus from the curse of the law. The law says the soul that sinned shall die. But Jesus said, I'll fulfill the law. And he did. He fulfilled the law for me. So as far as God is concerned, the Father, I've lived it perfectly. Not in me, but in him. I plead Jesus. When I stand before the, the Lord someday, when I stand in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ, it's going to be Jesus, you're mine. I trusted you on earth. I mean, ever how we're going to say it, but I'm, I'm going to be looking to him Amen. when we get to heaven. Then it's also free from the guilt of sin. Romans 8, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Then it's, of course, free from the dominion of sin. 
Romans 6 says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You're not under the law anymore, but you're under grace. But praise God in the Lamb forever. Sin, even though it's around us, we commit sin sometimes, but it, don't, it doesn't have dominion over us. We can overcome it. I mean, you may, fail, you may fall tonight. You may commit some kind of sin tonight. But hey, tomorrow, you're going to be so sorry that you're going to be saying, Lord, I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry that I said that. And you're going to want to make it right. That's just the way it is. You grieve the Holy Spirit. When he's grieved, he'll get a hold of your heart. And he'll draw you back to that fellowship. And then it's free from the power of darkness. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It's freedom from the fear of man. That's one thing that gets a lot of people down. They're afraid of men. What are you afraid of men for? That's just like you. I mean, hey, I mean, you may trot some great old big guy up here and say, you know, I'm going to take old Sammy K down. You may be surprised. You may be surprised. I remember Ralph Sexton Sr. said one time he's preaching on the street and this guy came up and he said, uh, and he slapped Dr. Sexton for preaching. And he said, the next thing he knew, some guy knocked that guy winding. And then said he turned around and the guy that hit the guy, he couldn't even see him. Didn't know where he went. He just gone. Now, I don't understand that. I'm not trying to get into some kind of mysterious stuff. <coughs> but you go to messing with a child of God. I mean, and a man is preaching the word of God. You're, you're asking for trouble. Amen. I tell the story a lot of the man in North Carolina that preached uh, in a church and the deacons got mad at him. One of the deacons got up out of the seat, walked up and took the preacher by the arm, took him to the door. Well, he wouldn't have got to the door of me. I'm not bragging. You just wouldn't have got to the door of me. I'll tell you, I wouldn't have had to do anything. You see that last Sunday when those women about to flog me, brother. I had enough people here to take care of the uh, Gideon's army. He, the biggest Gideon's army. We had everybody. But what I'm saying, that guy escorted that preacher out and said, you're through. And the preacher left. I preached for this preacher. He started another little church on a lawnmower shop. I've told this a lot. And in that lawnmower shop, they started with, you know, just a few people. Like we started in that little white building. And he was talking to me on the phone one day. And he said, when we get able, we want to have you come preach a revival for me. And I said, well, what do you mean when you get able? He said, well, when we get the money and we give you an offering and all that. I said, uh-uh. You don't have to worry about that. I don't preach for money. If you want me to come, let God lay me on your heart, and then I'll come. He said, well, you're already booked. You're already booked. I want you to come and preach. I went down there and preached in that little old, uh, place. And uh, to get ahead of myself here, that guy that escorted that preacher out, his son was 16 years old, I believe it was, and he worshiped that boy. Thought the world of his son, like all of us do. Well, that son, the next week, got killed in a car wreck. And then that guy, the daddy, was so torn up that he took a pistol and blew his own brains out. Now, that's the guy that took the preacher out. You want to try that? I don't have to touch you. God's got you. God's got us preachers in the hall of his hand. I couldn't die if I wanted to unless God let it happen. And so this preacher started that church in that lawnmower shop, and I went down, and there was about 30, 40 people there, and we preached just like we preach here. And then the next year they called me, and they had bought land across the street and had built a 40 by 80 auditorium out of brick, beautiful thing, and had named it Truth Missionary Baptist Church. And that church is there today in Moncure, North Carolina. And the pastor, of course, went to the mission field later on, and I, I told him a while ago there was a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph came, so I haven't been back, if you understand that. All right. But the church is still there with our name on it, and I praise God for that. But you can't touch God's anointed. So these enemies, uh, we, we see that People fear man, but you don't have to fear man. Uh, in Acts 4.20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's the apostles. And they're under pressure right now. 
Their enemies discussed them and what they were doing in the city and how they were getting people saved. And they didn't want to spread this gospel of Jesus. They didn't want it to keep on spreading. And so they threatened them, called them in, talked to them, threatened them, said, you don't preach like that anymore. They commanded them to not talk in Jesus anymore. They went right on preaching Jesus. They were not afraid of men. Brother, don't be afraid what men can do. So this freedom we have frees us from the fear of man. I don't fear any man. I'm not be stupid, but I don't. But the Bible teaches I don't have to. And then, uh, this freedom is freedom from the sting of death. Over there in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what this freedom is not, and what this freedom is. And then, what does this freedom make us? It makes us free sons. 1 John 3, 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. When we get saved, we are sons of God. And nobody can change that, not even Satan. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now. Hallelujah. Don't that make you feel good? You're a son of God right this moment. And then... It not only makes us free sons, it makes us free servants. 1 Corinthians 7, 22, For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Free man. And likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. So you and I who are free, we serve him. Why are we serving him? Because we're free and we're free to do it. Nobody can stop. And then we're free worshipers. In Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 17, uh, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. He buried our past. He buried all of our sin. How can a person receive this freedom? Simply by coming to him. Him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. By trusting him. Acts uh, 16, 31, Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then, of course, uh, believing is trust in Christ from the heart, faith. That's what it does. That's the only way you can be saved. And then we have these freedoms. And you'll have to excuse me for hacking and carrying on like this. It's not my real fault. I'm not trying to. I'm going to quit right now. But listen, if you're not free tonight, you want to be free He'll make you free. I guarantee you he'll make you free. Jesus, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free for sure, for sure. You'll be free if you come to Jesus. Let's stand our feet and bow our heads. And those by streaming, if you're not saved, we want you to know how to be saved also. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus in faith, believing, and God will save you. Thank you, church, for being here. A good crowd on Sunday night. We appreciate everybody being here tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for getting us through this day with a certain amount of joy and happiness and contentment. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, my Savior, and what he did for me at Calvary and how he set me free. Lord, I don't have to worry or fret about anybody or anything because we belong to the Lord Jesus we're sealed by His Holy Spirit. And I pray that you'll bless our church. Give us blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We'll thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.